Hi, my name is Jimmy Roxon. I'm uh, the Pioneer Minister at St Michael's Church in Stoke Gifford. And uh, this last summer in July, um, I led a, a trip out to Ancoli Diocese in Uganda. Uh, we took ten young people away, two of our church interns and myself. Um, as a deanery, we have a link with Ancoli Diocese, so we were quite keen to strengthen that link. Uh, we had Bishop Sheldon over earlier on uh, that year and uh, he was quite keen for us to come over and we, we went there to do a faith sharing trip where we would primarily um, share the gospel with people, share stories of what God is doing in our lives and be able to pray with people as well and give people an opportunity to respond to the gospel and what God was doing or saying. But one of our young people, a lad called Liam, uh, he's a bit of an athlete so he likes to go out for runs and uh, he, he went out for a run one night and the previous night he'd went on the same route and uh, he was running along this route and it was quite common for little kids to run behind him for a bit or kind of cheer him on and he got so far and he heard uh, one child come behind him and say go on man you can do it go further and uh, at that he was inspired to run further than he went the previous day and as he went along this track he kind of went out of the, the city of Emberara where we were staying and uh, it was kind of in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't a great deal around, but yeah, he heard this child behind him again saying, you can do it, you can go further, and he turned around to thank the child, and there was no one there. And uh, he stopped around there, and he saw this man sat on the curb with his head in his hands, and he went over to him and just asked, are you all right? And uh, he sat next to him, and this guy just said that he um, had been carrying stones home, I think he broke stones as a job, um, and that he had uh, rolled his ankle and was unable to go home that evening or to keep walking on it. And Liam, you know, in light of what he had seen in the schools, just asked if he could pray for him. And Liam said that after five minutes, the guy, the guy got up, started to test it, started to walk, started to run and was really happy and uh, ran home. Um, and uh, we were back at the, uh, the church guest house where we were staying that night and Liam uh, came back and he was out of breath, he was huffing and he's puffing and he's going, I've got, I've got to tell you something and you know, just couldn't get the words out and uh, he's like, God, get everyone together and uh, you know, he just shares the story and you could see from Liam that he was just, he was just blown away, like he'd just witnessed, which he had a miracle. Um, it was great to see our, our young people actually hear from God for the first time, get specific words about conditions people had and to see people in the school respond to those words and be healed. Uh, one of my personal highlights from one of the schools was uh, in the district of Ibanda. Um, we went to uh, this school that was just out of the middle of the sticks. It took ages to get there. It was a really stressful journey. Uh, the roads were dry, just started ent entering into the car and I think people were quite tired from the kind of the, the ministry we had been doing. It, it had been quite intense, and uh, we were all a bit tired and worn out. But when we got there, I think we just decided, let's put this behind us. You know, let let's pray and let's just expect God to do some great stuff here. And it was a small school. It must have had about 50 or so pupils. We were sat outside um, under a tree, and we just. There, the same thing, some worship songs, some testimonies, an evangelistic talk, and then uh, we started to move into a time of inviting the Holy Spirit and praying for people. And one of the girls on my team, uh, she, she said to me, uh, Jim, I think God's given me a name for someone uh, that he wants to touch or do something with. Can you, can you pray and see if God confirms that? Because I don't want to share it. So I just prayed and just I had these two names that came to mind, which were Mary and uh, Elizabeth and I said to Michaela, it was the name either Mary or Elizabeth, she said it was Mary. So in, in the context of praying for people we gave up both these names and it turned out that uh, the local minister's wife was called Mary and she was unwell, she wasn't present but we were able to just, just pray for him and to pray for her um, and uh, we, uh, also asked is there someone here called Elizabeth and there was someone who worked at the uh, school secretary who was working in the office at the time. Uh, someone went and fetched her and she was called Elizabeth and brought her out and just simply said Elizabeth is there anything you would like the Lord to do for you? I just sense he's giving me your name and she says well I've come into work today with a bad stomach it's it's not great could you pray for it? And we just uh, placed my hand there and just prayed uh, commanding it to go in the name of Jesus and instantly it went she was healed and she went back off to work and you know we saw some 
great things happened in that school. Even the headmaster had uh, pain in his legs for years. Um, and incrementally, incrementally, as we started to pray for him, it would go, it went. Uh, the same with uh, the local lay worker as well. His knee got healed. He had had problems with one of his knees for a long time. And there were even some children, it was a secondary school, but there were some young children who were just observing. And one of them were unable to, uh, to turn their head properly. And uh, some of our teenagers went over and, and through the interpreter began to pray with these children. And, and the child who had little mobility in his neck was able to just fully turn his neck completely fine. Um, and those kind of healings became quite common actually in the schools. Um, in, in many ways our expectations were, were surpassed. You know, coming back, I'd say that everyone from the team has been emboldened. On the first Sunday we were back in church, uh, we shared some testimonies from Uganda, stories of what God had been doing, some of the healings, and uh, we just gave out a few words of conditions that might have been there in the church, and there was uh, one particular lady who had one of those conditions, I think it might have been a bad ankle, or, or a knee, I can't quite remember now, but um, she didn't respond to that, but she went forward for prayer for other things, and one of our young people prayed for her, and she found that once she got up, her body pain had completely gone, and uh, it's been great to see our guys more proactive now, praying for folk that they're back, and uh, even for me personally, I think it's just emboldened me um, in stepping out. You know, the trip, um, it wasn't without its difficulties, as I said, it was really intense, and I think it took its toll on the team, and it stretched us, and it stretched some of the relationships, but also it really brought us together as a team as well, and it really stretched our faith and our confidence in the gospel that as we you know, do God stuff, as we you know, tell people about him, even just in, in a down-to-earth way, um, or just share our stories, that can stir faith in other people, and that actually God's kingdom can break through in those situations, and that as we just step out, as we be bold and just try and respond to the Spirit's leading, or you know, even just ask to pray for people, that God often shows up 